going to learn about factoring quadratic expressions and how to find the zeros. Can you guys do the slower stuff there? Yes. Okay. what a greatest common factor is. Is it the greatest number they, the number can be hidden by? Yeah, I mean, it, you're really close. So it's like, when you have two numbers, the greatest common factor is the largest number that can equally be divided into both of those. So, what our textbook says, if you that, um, the definition for that, um, actually, we're not going to go through this, so that, that's for our knowledge. Um, so what a quadratic expression is, is it's a, a quadratic expression is a mathematical expression that has the highest power of two. So an example of one is x squared plus four x minus two. And this is a quadratic expression because the, out of all the terms that have include a variable, the highest exponent is two, which makes it quadratic. Today we're gonna learn how to factor each one of these and take those to make a zero. Madison? Doesn't quad mean four? That's a really, really great thing, and we have an actually that would require knowledge to work this. Oh, okay. A little bit. Um, it has to do with the fact that it's like squares and stuff. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the point is here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's mathematical prior knowledge. Um, so what I want all of you guys to do is write your own definition of the greatest common factor and how you think this could possibly relate to factoring a quadratic expression. But for today's lessons, we're only going to look at quadratic expressions that look more like this, like x squared plus 3x. So kind of take a second to think about how greatest common factor is going to help you break down Take x, 
multiply by x and get x squared, and x times 3 is 3x, okay? and both are the same. It doesn't seem like we've divided anything. Well, you're, you're not going to be dividing anything. I think you're Was probably that the first question you said. You're like, talking about greatest common factor. Yeah. And I think you might be thinking of a greatest common denominator. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to so simplify this to get the x pull out all the common factors. And you'll see why we do this in the next step and how it can aid us with graphing and understanding a graph of the initial expression. But we'll get that to that in the second part of our student lesson today. So we're going to do another one of these. like where the finish line is, but I'll keep running until you tell me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so the finish line in that sense, we will be getting to what this is helpful with for the second part of the lesson. Okay, Emily? And the last one, if the 10 had been a nine, you would have just left it as a nine because there's no common factor, correct? Exactly, okay. if this was a nine, you would have just left it as a nine, you would have just pulled the x out, and there would have been two x plus nine. Okay. <laughs> 